Okay. All right. So let me share my screen. Is this screen. And let's go on to the Women's League website. Okay. Can you see my browser? Yes. Okay. Women's good. League for conservative. Right. So it's WLCJ.org. But if you just type in, see, I typed in WLCJ in Google, it comes up. So if you go on to the website, um, you hit the login up here. Now, if you have your name and password, you put that in there. If not, just hit forgot slash reset password. And when you do that, um, as long as you use the same email you use to register for sisterhood, then you should be fine. If you have a problem, you can give um, you can give Razel a call. Um, she is uh, she will make sure you're a member of of sisterhood and all that, and then she'll give you you know she'll tell you which email it's under and password and all that. So if you do this forgot reset password, um, it will it will give you a link for your password. Um, and if it doesn't recognize your email, if you had a different email that you were using in the past. Um, that's where it is. So if you, if you, if you, once you log in, you go to download member materials and you go over to the Hebrew classes and you go to the fall semester, beginner Hebrew, you find my class. Only one of the recordings is up there. Hopefully next week's last week. I'll have to find out why last week's recording is not up there. Um, and, uh, and that's there. Um, I, if you want, I can also have her upload, um, I can also have her upload um, the recordings I do as well, if you want. Um, so you have it did all. You, did you time. do a recording um, this week? Because I didn't get it. Um, I did. And I sent it out kind of late because I was way on business. I sent it out on the 21st. There you go. On the 21st. At seven in the morning. Sounds about right. Because I was looking to put it somewhere. I I don't have it for some reason. I, I don't okay. Have it. I'm gonna re-forward it to you. Give me your just give Thank me your you. email real quick, and I'm gonna do it right now as we're on. J L A V E T T E R at Yahoo. This meeting is being recorded. All right, so I just sent this to so you to have it. And what I did is I did um. I did, the, I did the recap for this week, for last week and the week before. So now, Marcy, you're in on two. Yeah. 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 I think you have to get out of both of, both of them, Marcy. Right. That's for me. So, okay. Any que any other questions about? Yeah, I have two questions. Sure. Um, one is uh, when there's a lamed in the middle of the word, and there's no vowel under it. I am never sure exactly how to pronounce that. If it's like the you pronounce as part of the. Um, letter and vowel ahead of it, or just sort of the name of the Lamed itself. Right. And you're just kind of saying, look, is what look. you're saying. Like, um, so for example, if you look at this one, line okay. three, right? The first, the first one doesn't have a sound under the mem. So it's malachim, right? You're really not putting a vowel under it at all. You're trying to blend the mem and the Lamed together, malachim. Um, okay. Same thing with the second to last word here, malchai. You're trying to mal, you know, like just putting mm -hmm. those together. It's a little confusing. Okay. Um, I, I think I get it. I'm looking at um, like on page six, line eight, the last word. So that would be mel. Uh, mel I'm trying mel to see when we learn it. Melchai. 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 Right. 
trying to see when we learn the Shiva, because that's when it will all come together. Here. <clears throat> huh. Anyway, okay. My my other question is yeah. about the yud. Um, how does that change how you pronounce it, and does it not change the at all? With Changes the it press? really, really slightly. So if you think of the yud like our y in English, it is a consonant and a vowel, right? When it's a consonant, you say like um, yellow, right? You have to really pronounce the Y in yellow. But when you say it like in your name, Judy, you don't have to pronounce the Y. It's not Judy, right? So it's very slight. Okay. So that's the difference. So for example, again, on this page, ten, uh, oh, let's not do page 10 because you don't know it yet. I don't want to skip that far ahead. Um, so let's say line five on this page here. It's chim, right? But you kind of hear the yud in there, chim, mm. right? Okay. So it's so slight though, it really doesn't matter if you pronounce that y or not. It really- so the yud wasn't there, you might not hear it any differently anyway. Correct, correct. Okay. Like here, line two, I'll read it for you. Chi. Chi, 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 me, chi, me. No okay. difference. Got it. Thank you. Hey, Maura, can you see or hear me now? I'm still on there. Yeah, you're good. I can, can see I and hear you. Okay. And you only have one screen. So I think you fixed whatever it was. Okay, good. Okay. All right. Uh, any other questions about the material from the last couple of weeks before we go on to page 10? Okay. So new letter today. It's called the hey. And it is just like an H, right? Not the guttural H, but the H. Okay. When a hey is at the end of the word, it's usually silent. It's usually just there for grammatical purposes. Okay. Um, oh, I meant to take out my sidur too. Oh, well, because there was something I wanted to show you on this, but that's okay. Okay. So easy peasy line one, he, he, hey, hey, he, he. All same vowels that we've been learning, right? Um, let, I'm going to stop share so I can see your faces. Um, okay. Uh, Janet, do you want to do line two, page ten? Sure. He 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 he. Beautiful. Uh, Dina, do you want to do line three? Okay. Ha 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 ha. Well. All right. <laughs> laughing at us now. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sammy, how about line four? Um, hala, ha ha, hama, hama, um, ha, ham, um, right? No vowel oh, under that. I thought there was a line ha. under it. Nope. So, yeah, yeah. This is, I apologize. This book has been copied so many times that it's, it's, um, it's sometimes you have dots and things that are hard to read, um, okay. but we do have permission to use it, so we're using it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, hey, me, hame, hame. Right, hame and hame. Perfect. Okay. Um, Judy L, line five. Hame, hamelech, 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 hame. Perfect. Uh, and do you want to do line six? Sure. Um, ham, ham, la, ham, la, ki, ham, la, ki, ham, la, ki. Beautiful. That was hard. Yep. Um, okay. Karen, line seven.
Oh, Linda, sorry. Hamlachi, Hamlachi, Hamlachim, Hamlachim. Wonderful. Um, who do I have next? Judy Schwartz, line eight. Male, no, Male, Hamlachim, Hamlachim. Perfect. Uh, what was the first word? Um, mal, okay. mal, mal, ma, um, mal, 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 no, ma, mal, 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 yeah, Jamie's, in the car. Jamie's in the car, so we're not going to make her look at anything or do anything. <laughs> Janet, line 10. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. So easy letter. Doesn't look like any other letters we've learned, so we can't confuse them. Okay. Let's go on to page 11. Oh, page 11 is a review. So I will probably record line six through the end for you so that you can have this good review of everything we've learned up until now. Um, and then we'll move on. And, and so that's a good one to review for the week. Um, and now we'll move on to line 12 um, with a new- Can I ask a question? Yeah, in of course. Um, for the vowels, is the tsere with a yud still tsere, or is it called something different when it's got the yud with it? You know what I'm asking? Yeah, it's still the same. Okay. All right. It's still the same because the vowel is the vowel and the, the yud is the yud. Okay. All right. If you were going to be you. spelling it to somebody, you would, you know, do that. Okay. Um, and again, let's remember that. In modern Hebrew, um, in modern Hebrew, um, they don't use vowels. Like if you pick up a newspaper, they don't have vowels. So that's why the names of the vowels really don't mean anything. <laughs> like when I give you that symbol, I'm obviously copying it from somewhere on the internet to give you, you know, so I don't have to draw it for you because I'm so bad at even writing, much less drawing. Um, so I'm copying that for you. So the, if the if the names of the vowels get confusing, just pass those by. Don't even just know that the one that looks like a little plus says ah. That's all you need to know. You don't need to know the name of it. You don't need to know any of that. Okay. As long as we're on that topic, can I ask one more question? Yeah, of course. So when you're laning and there's no vowels, is it context that tells you what the word is supposed to be or have people just memorized it? It's memorized. It's okay. memorized because there are times where, you know, certain vowels, certain letters and vowel combinations will make different sounds. Right. So you have to know what it is. Okay. So, um, and, and Torah Hebrew is a little bit different than modern Hebrew or spoken Hebrew. Right. And so what will happen is, um, I can't even think of a word, but there are words that if you would say this story in Hebrew would be, would, 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 um, would have a different vowel than if you were to read it out of the Torah. So you okay. really have to know it. Okay. And most of the time when you hear people correcting, uh, when you hear the Gabi correcting mm -hmm. reading Torah, it's a vowel Okay, because they're saying, well, this is bite. This says house bite. And but no, it's bait, meaning house of. Right. right? It changes okay. just very slightly. So that's okay. where um that's how the gabayim come in very yeah. handy. And a good gabai will go through the Torah portion before they get up there and be like, okay, these are the words that I know they could flub up. Right. And the gabai's job is really not to correct every mistake, it's just to correct the mistakes that would change the meaning of what's being read okay so 
If you get a really good gabai, even if the person says bite or bait, doesn't matter because we all know it's the house of so-and-so um, as opposed to something else, <coughs> which could mean, you know, which could change the entire meaning of the word. So okay. anyway, right. okay. Sorry. digression, but, but digression, but that's okay. All right. So this is a shin. Um, and you know, this is in Shabbat Shalom, right? Um, the dot on the right-hand side is very important. Um, so just remember that we'll get into when, it, when it's important later, but, but it's important. Um, so I'll do line one and then I'll just start going around the room again. Line one, she, 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 sha, sha. All right, Karen, we lost you for a minute there. Okay, and I have to apologize. Um, can I, I'm, I'm first we trying to skip find you. it on the other computer. What page okay. are we on? It's page 12. We can skip you and come back. And, and can I be an observer today? Because yeah, I will be can... honest. And Absolutely. Can I, um, I missed last week. And All I... good. And so let me just tell everyone, if you are having a day, <laughs> <laughs> you really don't want to. She can't she hear, can't hear me. She's saying. You can't hear me. Can everybody else hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to write it in the chat too. If you're having a day and you don't want to, you know, you don't want to be on, you didn't review, you don't feel comfortable, text me, send me an email, or at the beginning of class, or send me a private chat and say, please don't call on me. And I won't, it's not a big deal, so. I'm just writing that in the chat, so. I can't, I, as much as I'm very fidgety, I can't do two things at once. Okay. All right, so we'll go back up to uh, Dina, line two. Shame, shame, shem. Shame, shame. shame. Line two? Line two. I was now, okay. Uh, third word is shame. Shame, 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 sham, sham. Beautiful. Sammy, line three. Shil, shil, shale, shale, shame, shale, shawl, shawl, shawl. Beautiful. Marcy, line four. Shall, shali, shali, shalay, shalay, shala, shala, shalay. Or I think okay. the, shal, the last two are shalay. It's hard to read it. So the fr the the third third to last word is shala. Shala, shalay, and then oh, shala. It's shala, uh, right? It's hard to read again. It, you know the poor, uh, the poor copying. So it's <laughs> shala, the last two. Okay, perfect. All right, Judy, Judy L, line five. Shame, sham, shal, shal, shalay, 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 shalay. Beautiful. And line six. Um, shall, shall, mm. Mm. <laughs> Just mm. <laughs> yeah. mm. Okay, I didn't know how to do that. <laughs> mm. Fine, no, no worries. <laughs> um, lame, lame, cha, lame, 
Shalem. Perfect. Okay. Um, we're going to skip over line seven. That looks really easy to me. And uh, Linda, let's do line eight. Shalem, Shalem, Shalom, Shalem, Shalem. Perfect. And uh, Judy Schwartz, line nine. I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you could do it. <laughs> Mele, um, sh Shalei. Ma, Shalem. Shalem. Um, Malay, Shalay, Malay, Malay. That's A and A, right? Right. So it's Malay. Okay. Um, Shal Shalay, Shlem. No, no, no. Shalem. Shalem. Remember, we're going wait, 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 oh. down and over, down and Shalane, over. Shalem, and then uh -huh. shame. Uh huh. And Shalem. Shalem. Yes, 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 yes. Good, 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 good. It's not. It's not easy. It's not easy. Remember, it's down and over, down and over. It's kind of hard. Um, I'm having a hard time remembering what the three dots are. Ah. Okay. Okay, yeah, the three dots are the eh, yeah. and the two dots are the a. a. So, yeah. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Um, Janet, line 10. Shalane, 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 Lechem, Shalane, Lechem. Right, Lechem, good, good, good. Okay, Dina, line 11. Lechem, Lechem, Shame, Sham, Shalem, Lechem. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, Anne, line 12. Shalem, Le, Lech, Lechem, Mi, Melech. Mal hey. Ha. We're learning, we're learning something new here, which I remember yeah. I said, I wonder when we learned this. And I was flipping back and forth in the book. Right here is where we learn it. I didn't okay. realize. Okay. So these two dots that look like a colon underneath the word, they are, it's called a schwa. They are. They say nothing, but they act as a syllable stopper in the middle of the word. So here, this, uh, whoops, let me share my screen so that I could point and show you what I mean. Here, in the middle of the word, it says mal -che. So you are stopping that syllable after the lamed, right? Mal chay. In this word, it's ham stop lachin. Ham lachin. I have a question. Yeah. There's this there's a star next to that. And if you go down to the star, it says it's pronounced like uh in about. No, it's no, not. That's wrong. No. So cross that out. Cross that out. Um, in the middle of the word, sometimes you have to utter, we kind of talked about this, I think last week, you have to utter some sort of a sound, right? So it's trying to give you that sound to utter, but really it's a syllable stopper. So it's mal chay, right? So when you hear me say mal chay, I'm, I am uttering something after that lamed, but it's nothing, you know what I mean? Now, so it's, ham, it's ham lachim, it's not ham, ham, ham malachim. Ham malachim, right? But you have to pronounce that mo. 
So you you have to you have to pronounce something after the mo, right? So it's ham lachim. Now, if we go up to back to the, the first page, right? Um, I'm gonna pick a word here. Okay, so second line of the song, right? We know how, I'm gonna I'm gonna be the bouncy ball and show you the words, and then we're gonna stop at this. At, at these words that have the shva and uh, this word that has the shva and I'm going to show something to you. Shalom Aleichem Malachai Asharit Malachai Elyon Mi Melech Malachai Right? That's how you hear it. But it's really Mi Melech Malachai Hamlachim um, but when we sing it, sometimes we give it a little, we have to give it a little fanfare. So some people, and the same thing here with ham lachim, right? Right? So when we're singing it, we give it sometimes a vowel that isn't really there, right? So if I were recording this for you to sing, I would do it really slowly so that you knew it's me lachim. So you could hear that in it. Because that's how it is. And when you're singing it fast and when you're singing it, sometimes you know you let out a sound, you know, an extra vowel-y sound, right? Um, so that's why they're doing that. Because again, this book is really structured to teach you this song. Um, because it's the start of Friday night, right? So they wanted to make it very Hamish. Um, so uh, so that's why that why that why that happens there. Um, I'm just I'm gonna go I'm gonna skip a little bit here. I'm, we're gonna come back to there. We're not going anywhere. Uh, no, I thought that there would be more. Okay, so that's Shiva. Now, when the Shiva is at the beginning of the word, and I'm going to find something where it is, because I want to show you maybe page one. When the Shiva is at the beginning of the word, which does not happen in any of these examples. Okay. I'm going to have to find one. That's where you're going to utter a little bit of a, a vowel. Okay, so and on that first page, it was yeah. the third word. Right here. The I mean, third the word, word doesn't have the shwa. No, no, the second word. The second, second word. No, that's, that's a new vowel. We'll, we'll learn that another day. Uh, <laughs> okay. I'm on page 18, line eight here. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna learn this in just a second, but let's just forget the other the other letter in this word okay this is shema so you hear me say it shema i have to i have to put an e there because i can't uh, because because of the vowel right it here it's not a syllable stopper because sh is not a syllable so when it's at the very beginning of the word underneath you know this consonant okay you have to kind of utter a little bit of an eh. So it's shema. Listen. If there was no vowel, it would be shema. But it's well, shema. It's not shema like, like uh, it's, is it always an eh? Or does uh -huh. it depend on the word? Yep, it's always an eh. Now let's look at this one. And forget the hay in front of it. Let's pretend that's a word. It would be melachim. Melachim. But again, you have to pronounce that e. Eh. So when it's the beginning of the word, there's a little e. Eh. When it's in the middle of the word, it's a syllable stopper. And you could pronounce the l a little bit if you want. That wouldn't be incorrect. <clears throat> but you can't go full e. Eh because then you'd be wrong. <laughs> it's one of the hardest concepts in Hebrew is the shva. That I will tell you. 
And because of that, I'm, I, I'm going to teach you maybe one more thing today, because I don't want, I want you to, you know, I want you to have that. Um, there's not a lot to practice here though, which is kind of weird, but, um, but okay. Let me just quickly look at my lesson plan and see what I have planned to teach today. Well, I did plan to teach the I with it. Okay, good. So, okay, fine. So, all right. Confusing concept. We're going to be talking about it a lot over the next couple of weeks because you're all going to come back with questions and that's okay. All right. <laughs> Okay, page 13, I'm gonna stop sharing so I can see your faces again. Page 13. <clears throat> now, they're show, remember how we learned the E vowel and then we said E with the Yud is also the same. Here, they're gonna teach it to you all at once. So when there is a little dot, and you'll see right here on the left side of the word, it's pronounced. <laughs> Oh, you see underneath when you have a mem with, and then this is a vav with a dot on top, that's also an o. Oh. So those two things say o. Oh. I, I don't get it. Oh. oh. So it's a little dot on the left? The little dot on the left on the top okay. or the vav with a dot on top. Let me share my screen again. Okay, so this says mo and this says mo. This says ho and this says ho. This says sho. See how weird that looks with the two dots? And this says sho. This says ho. And this says ho. Lo. Lo. So is that a letter or is that a vowel? It's a vowel. And when it's on top of the vowel, it acts like a vowel. It's just a vowel. I wish they had just taught you the dot and then next time said, okay, now also, so you could do just like you did last time with the, with the Yud. Yeah, Karen. Is the top of the word shall on the top of the page 13 Shalom? Yes. Shalom. So, so doesn't it sound like an more of an O like a, a direct O? Well, in Hebrew, you say Shalom. You don't say Shalom, right? That's how we say it in English. <laughs> In Hebrew, that word is shalom. So keep saying it again. <laughs> shalom, shalom, shalom. So it sounds like an O there to me. It doesn't sound like an O. It's O, shalom. Okay. Mo. Lo. Oh, it's, it's like staccato or something. Shalom. Yeah. So is it the same thing when you're saying lo? When we say, we say when we're reading and we say look, not. It's really look. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just our American pronunciation. The yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And if that's how you want to say it, that's fine too. <laughs> so, but it's never known really as an O sound. It's an O sound. Just sometimes accents. Oh. Are those, oh. 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 Okay. Oh. Right. Oh. Oh. So oh. basically, a lot I of stand words... like this. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and because the dots on top, it makes so much sense. Oh, like a UH sound. Uh, no, oh, oh. Like, no, like, it says like all oh, like thoughts on the bottom of the page. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that could be like ah, yeah, ah. So basically, all this time we've been we've been pronouncing shalom wrong. It's shalom. an American pronunciation. Okay. Right. But it's not really the way it reads. It's just how we say. It's not it. in Hebrew, no. Okay. Got it. But again, you know, 
you know, going back to Janet's example, when somebody goes up to read Torah, you know, um, uh, we were we were at my nephew's bar mitzvah a couple of years ago, and he is um, my my nephew lives in Chicago, so he has this very thick Chicago accent. So he was doing his Torah portion portion. He's like Vida Bear Moshe, <laughs> you know. And we were laughing. We were like, "Oh my God, this is like." You know, just have one of the Chicago Bears get up there and talk. And that was him. You know, he just had this really <laughs> thick. And when he sang Torah, he sang it the same way. Um, but, you know, because we we learned it the Hebrew way. And so to us, it was funny, but it was totally acceptable. So I'm here to try to teach you the exact way. But if it comes out a different way, as long as it's fine. And again, this class is meant to teach you how to read Hebrew and how to understand when somebody from the Bima is speaking and, and singing that you can follow along, right? It's not meant to be like, okay, you have to say it this way. You have to do this. You have to do that um, because we're all going to do it our own way. We each have different dialects. We each have different things. We're from all parts of the country. And um, I was, I was in the South for business this week and um and uh, I said something about a dog and they all erupted in laughter because I said it like a New Yorker dog, <laughs> like D-A-W-G. <laughs> they were, they loved it. <laughs> In the meantime, everybody, every time somebody called me ma'am, I was looking around to see what old lady was standing behind me. <laughs> and then I realized they were talking to me because, you know, they're, they're, they've got that Southern hospitality and I am ma'am apparently. <laughs> So, um, okay, so, um, all right, let's start with line, line six is all the same. Let's start with line seven. Whose turn is it? Let me see. Uh, we got Marcy, we got Judy, we got Ann, we got Linda. So Judy Schwartz, your turn, line seven. Again? Okay. So the good thing is three of the three of these words are the same and two of the other words are the same. So it's really only three words. Shalom. Oh, shalom. Um okay. Melech. Okay. No, Mel. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. Melech. Melech. Okay. Shalom. Melachim. Melachim, yeah. And Melech. Um, eh. Shalom Melech. Yeah, you got it. Okay. Janet, you get the hard one, line eight. <laughs> okay. Shalom. La Melech. Hamlachim. La Melech. Malche. Hamlachim. Good. See the difference with how she had. Lamelech and Hamalachim, right? There's a little bit of a difference there. All right. Dina, line nine. Lee. Lech. Ah, that one is, you see yes. the vowel underneath the Chaf Sophi? That's Lecha. Lecha. Mm hmm. Lecha. Why, why is it the ah, ah there? Do you see underneath you? Yeah. You see the little plus sign under the half so feet here? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I didn't realize plus that's fine. Yeah. That's uh, the ha. Okay. So what was that? The ha. First is li, le ha. Le ha. Mm hmm. Lal. Lech, lecha, lo, lo, mm -hmm. la, lachem, lachem. Right. So the last two words, one's lachem and one's lachem. Right. Depending on how you pronounce that chaf, they may sound. Oh, oh okay. Right. Lachem, lachem, lachem. Lachem, Lachem. Lachem. Lachem and Lachem. Lachem, Lachem. 
Right. So one, the first one's a hey and the other one's a, a half. Right. right. Got it. Okay. Right? Like the word H O L L E R is holler. The word C H L L A H is chala. Right. So H versus the ch. So lahem and then lachem. Okay. It's hard when you're going back and forth in Hebrew between the ha and the ha. Lahem, lachem. I guess I'm thinking the same thing for some reason. All okay. Good. Okay. And line 10. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, shalom. 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 Right. Right. Shalom li, shalom lecha, shalom le, shalom lach, shalom lecha, shalom lo. Can you say that line one more time? Yeah. Shalom li, shalom lecha. Sorry. Second second phrase. Shalom lach. Shalom lecha. Shalom lo. So Janet, if you're reading this out of the Torah, do you notice that without vowels, the second two words look exactly the same, right? The same. Yeah. And yeah. they have two different, well, they mean the same, but two different meanings. This first one, well, the, the very first, shalom li means shalom to me. Shalom lach means shalom to you for a female. If I'm speaking to a female, shalom lach, right? So if a, a woman walked into my shop in the afternoon, I would say shalom lach, like welcome to you, female woman, right? Mm -hmm. The third one is shalom lecha, which is the same thing to a man. Shalom lecha, if a man walked into my, into my store, right? Shalom lo means shalom to him. Right. Somebody tells me somebody quit and I go, well, shalom, lo. like goodbye to him. Like, you know, good riddance. So they're all the same and context wouldn't do it. So it's a memorization thing. Yeah. So you would have to know whether whether in the Torah they were speaking to a man or to a woman. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That's why you'd have to memorize that if that was in the Torah. Now line 11, shalom lachem is shalom to all of you, a bunch of people, men and women, or just men. Shalom. You don't have to know any of these, by the way, you don't have to know any of these. I just wanted to show you like in the, when she said about the Torah, I wanted to show you that it means something a little bit different. Um, line 12 is shalom lechem, which I don't know what that means, so I couldn't even tell you. Uh, I don't know if it's made up so that we have this exercise, or if, uh, or if, uh, or if there's a body of people that that would go to. But if you would conjugate this verb lech, um, then you know it would be lachem, lachen, and lachem. I don't know what lechem means. Maybe it's a different tense. Maybe it's a different something. I don't know. Okay. Uh, Oh, oh, okay. I'll ask my uh, Israeli exchange students that are living with me. Yes, asking. would you? That would be great. Okay, so we're going to stop here. We're not, I was going to teach one more letter, but I think with the, I forgot about the Shva and that's such a concept. Um, so again, at the beginning of the word, you're going to utter a little F. Eh. In the middle of the word, it acts as a syllable stopper. So if we look at the shva on line eight, shalom lemelech ham lachim. Hmm. Shalom lemelech ham lachim. Yeah, ham lachim. 
-hmm. And if you say it fast, you're going to hear an ad there. Shalom lemelech hamelachim, right? You hear that ah after the mem. Not intentional, but because I said it fast, it, you know, it comes out. Mm -hmm. Not supposed to be that way, but if you say it fast, that's what happens. Or if you're singing it. Any questions? Any um, and all questions about sure. what we learned today? Anything? As as a kind of a prep for next week, what do you plan on covering up to next week? Okay, so next week we'll cover Ayn, we'll cover mm -hmm. Aleph, both of which are silent letters, and they're always going to have vowels somehow attached to them. Okay. Um, we'll do probably the ratio in the top. Gosh. We'll probably cover up to line 17, uh, which means that 18 and, okay. 18 and 19 are the end of the unit. So we'll probably go through page 19, but the material goes through page 17. Okay. And then 18 and 19 are a really good review. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. So, just as a different aside through um, my Jewish learning, they put out a word a day. That, nice. Yeah. Um, that they just started this. So what's it's, today's word? Um, today's word was um, tov. Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good. So tov tov me'od. <laughs> Very good. So they do a lot of great things, my Jewish learning. I get, the, they have like a Torah reading of the day. They have the Talmud of the day. They have a recipe of, of the day. A recipe. It's, it's really very nice. Right. If you're looking to gain a skill very slowly, it's really great because, you know, we're all busy. We all have a lot going on. And um, so that's great. It's funny, my synagogue today in their Friday email, they put out like a bunch of words like that we should know for the high holidays. And I was like, oh, this is a lot in one, <laughs> in yeah. one, uh, in one thing. Uh, I'm trying to find it. Uh, here it is. Let me see if I could share my screen. Jewish learning an app or a program? It's a website. MyJewishLearning.com. My it's really very nice. It's a great website. Um, here it is. That's a lot of Bilat words. Tashavua, Hebrew word of the week. It's one word that they give you the different pronunciations for. So they say slicha, which means forgiveness. And then they different derivations, slichot. Slicha. When you actually bump into someone. Um, slach lanu, forgive us, which is part of the Yom Kippur prayer, and mm -hmm. salachti, I forgive you. That's so, good. Uh, that was interesting. I like that. Um, Could you send that on to us? This? Yeah. Sure. Thanks. See if I can, I can forward it. Okay. Yeah, I'll get, I'll get that. Okay. Who asked me about the gluten-free recipe? I did. Oh, good. Okay. So I have her recipe and I will, I will, she just emailed it to me. I'll email it to you. Thank you. She said she doesn't braid it. It's very hard to braid it. So what she does is uses an ice cream scoop and puts it in a round so that it's a pull apart challah because the braiding is not worth the headache. I'll mm -hmm. take the gluten-free. Jamie would love the gluten-free anything. Could I have the gluten-free too? Yeah. To me too. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to send that one to everyone. Also, if you don't want it, just disregard my email. And <laughs> thank you. Does anyone live in Los Angeles or New York City? I live near New York City. Near, just outside the city. Because um, there's something called Modern Bread and Bagel, and it just opened up in Woodland Hills um, a couple of days ago, and the whole store is um, gluten free. And then the two locations in New York City 
are kosher and gluten-free because they close for Shabbat. Huh. Okay, 472 Columbus Avenue. Yeah, closes at three o'clock. It's like, get there soon because it closes. <sighs> so for mine, it's open seven days a week. And I, I just bought like one of everything so my daughter could taste it all. <laughs> nice. Very expensive. Yeah, they do rush. They all are. Water. Everything gluten free is expensive. You have celiac. I have a severe gluten allergy where I go into anaphylaxis. Right. Yeah. So there's one on the Upper West Side and one in Chelsea. And they, I think they ship to you. I bet they do. So. Nowadays. Everyone have a Shana Tova. I will Shana Tova. speak with you. Shalom.